Okay, thank you for inviting me for this excellent conference. So my name is James Söderman. I'm the faculty lead on the science engineering. At Queen Mary, psychology actually comes in under science engineering also. So I do deal with lots of psychology students. So I thought what I'm going to talk about today is more information literacy. And you might have seen this before. If you haven't, here it is. So it's a nice quote from the CELEP's information literacy group. And it talks about how we engage with information. And what I'm concentrating on today is find and use information. So, I'm going to argue with you today that an outstanding question will give you high quality search results. Because if you need to find high quality information and relevant information, it's important to have an idea of what you want to find. If your search topics are too broad or too narrow, you will spend too much time on them. And you want to save time by preparing yourself. So obviously, the search process and the search strategy and developing a search strategy is much broader than this. So defining a topic, select a keyword, select an appropriate database, build a search ring, boost your results. But what we're concentrating on today is defining your topic and select keywords. So I think Jay has very kindly started to hand out the papers. We can do this on on anything you have in front of you, really. So what I want you to encourage you to do today is to try to do a concept map. So to do this, you pick a broad topic, something you do want to research right now. And you want to find ways of breaking this topic apart and create a concept map. So what Jay was giving you is potentially is, well, <laughs> they might be slightly different because I see that you have something on the, in the back there. But there would be a, a paper with a, white, with, a back, uh, with a white background. Does most people have that? Yeah. So on the back, you can then use that as a concept map, but you can use any paper. The other ones, the other side we will go into later. Yeah, so that side, the blank side, use that for your concept map. So I did one here for Tower Bridge. I come from University, uh, Queen Mary, University of London. So obviously, we are in the east of London. So the Tower Bridge is the gate to the east of London, as we all know. So yes, so Tower Bridge in the middle. And then I have different topics here. So I have uses of Tower Bridge, the design of Tower Bridge, the history and the landmarks. And I break out from that too. So what I want us to do for about five minutes now is to think about our topic. So it might just be, you might just be starting with a topic, which is very fine. You can just have that in the middle. But I want you to start to think about how you would actually, and what areas that you want to research yourself. Yeah? And I am going to walk around. I'm not going to be able to talk to all of you, but I am walking around these five minutes to talk to you also. So what you want to do is put your topic in the middle. Then you start to look at different areas of your topic, and then go out from there. Obviously, you probably want to research my tower bridge, so you put your own topic in the middle. Yeah? So you have about five minutes now, and then we will continue. Okay, so as I was saying, Jay and I are going to be at the clinic later on during the lunch break, so you can find us there if you want to explore the topic a bit more. So yeah. Okay, so what you now need to start to do is look at your concept map and see which of these areas actually looks more interesting. What would be a good question to allow you to investigate this area? You might already have a question, but it's a way of finding what you are more interested in, because sometimes we are getting a good question, but we might not actually burn for that question. We might want to go another way. And by doing a concept map, you are then able to, to actually explore another, another side, potentially, if you wanted to. 
And when you have your question, these are really important questions. First of all, is your research topic clear? Is your research question focused? And is it complex? Now, it doesn't have to be complex. It just has to be complex enough for you to be able to do good research. So we have looked at how you might want to get to a question. And we have looked at the research questions. But then in databases such as Web of Science or PubMed, you will need to apply different strategies than if you were Googling. Because with Google, it has a lovely algorithm that will do lots of work for you. In databases like PubMed or Web of Science, you will need to do a bit of work yourself. And you want to split your topic into different parts, so-called keywords. But it can also be a set of words. So it doesn't just have to be one word. It can be a phrase or a longer. So let's see. So we have a topic here. Are autumn foliage colors red signals to aphids? Now, which ones would be the actual keywords here? What do you reckon? Color. Yeah, color, definitely. So autumn foliage color, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. So autumn foliage color, yeah. So that's one of them. Then something else. Aphids definitely. Aphids definitely, yeah. So my suggestion would be that you definitely want to have a combination of autumn foliage colors and aphids. And you might also want to think about signals, how you get that in. Now, obviously, this is a very flowery way of saying it. So actually, when you do the research, you will have to use other words to get the information you're looking for. Because most likely, if you put those words in, you will get this article, but nothing, not more, potentially. So really, what you want to do, and this is really what the, the other side of the sheet, the, the one that is actually have something on it, is doing, is to think about your topic again, and think about the broader and narrow terms. You want to think about synonyms and related terms, spellings, abbreviations, acronyms, anything that will be useful for you when you're actually researching a topic. And it's quite nice to actually break it down that way because you get lots of keywords that way. And also, if you get a bit stuck, then it's good to have a look at books and journals or anything that would be talking about this topic. And that's what Wikipedia sometimes can be good too, because it will give you words that you can use in a way and see what terminology would be useful for you. So let's see what time it is. So we might actually be able to do a bit of that too. So let's do a bit, two or three minutes of actually looking at your topics and breaking them apart a bit. Yeah? So the exercise we did first, take those into the blue boxes and then start to break them apart a bit. Okay, so hopefully people found that a bit helpful to really get stuck into the topics and start to explore them a bit more. So where to now? Well, obviously, when you now start to have the keywords, you start to need to have a look at where you would actually search. And there are some really good free software out there, like PubMed, for example, is a free database that you can use. But also to get into libraries like British Library or Senate House Library, or actually if you're connected to university, to actually go into your university library and start to search for your topic because you're at that point where you want to start to search now. So yeah, I'm going to finish a bit early and just say that there are lots of information out there that is useful to have. And here are a few further reading suggestions, but there are much, much more out there, so do have a look for them. And come and talk to a librarian, wherever you find them. So yeah. So thank you so much.